if you listen real close, coyote is grunting to the girls over here. Here they come running around the corner. What are you doing, puppy? What are you doing, puppy? You guys remember Wolf? He's gotten a little bigger. What I want to try to do before it gets too cold is I want to try to take these portable panels and then set them up in a circle so that we can feed out of those portable panels and feed hay this winter that way. These guys are always curious as to what I'm doing. These panels need to go over here and that hay ring needs to follow. This old area got blocked off with this electric fence and everything that the bison couldn't get to, it's overgrown with weeds. I've got a hay bale in there already. We're gonna move these panels around that area, move this electric fence, and then I'm gonna try to get a hay ring around that uh, hay bale that's from last year's that we need to use that up first. Well, we're getting somewhere. Got a couple panels moved. This uh, hay bale was a little bit of a pain to dig out. We've got a bunch of strings that go around it that I was trying to pull off, but that bale has just seeded into the ground from sitting there all year long. So we'll have to get some pliers or something to pull those strings out. And then we just need to get that ring on that bale. The bison are moving off to, into the field a little farther away. It's starting to get kind of dark. I want to get this done before it gets all the way dark and we can't do anything about it. That's what I was afraid of. We'll see you in the morning. We're gonna go ahead and feed the buffalo here in a bit, but we need to pull the strings out from underneath this hay bale here. So I got some pliers and we're gonna rip that out. That way the buffalo don't consume that string. Normally it's not that hard to get all this stuff off, this uh, string or twine or whatever you wanna call it, but because this hay bale has been sitting here in this exact spot all year long it's kind of settled quite a bit so we had to uh, get the vice grips out pull those off some people don't cut this off um, and i absolutely do the the netting the string every time um, i think that's a general practice to cut it off uh, but after hearing a friend of mine he actually had uh, bison to where he wasn't cutting the string off i think it was actually the netting and he had a couple of his bison die and he couldn't figure out what was going on um, until he did an autopsy on one and he found basically this in their stomach and realized that they were consuming the twine or the netting. Some people think that they'll eat around it and maybe most of the time they will, but sometimes they just get it caught in just like grass and they'll consume it. We need to get all these weeds trampled down around this hay bale ring all the uh, grass and weeds have grown up around it and the bison can't see it as much and so we need to clear all this out i know to a lot of you guys this hay might look old but if you pull it open underneath that first layer you get nice good sweet smelling hay. This is really, really early to be feeding hay. Normally we wouldn't feed hay this early at all. Um, and I don't even expect that they're gonna eat a whole lot of it. 
but I wanted to put that bale out there and just get that accessible to them. That way, um, I am just not impressed with the way this field is going right now. It's still green. Um, there's just not a whole lot of grass left. So they can eat on the field, but I wanna give them the option to grab some of that hay if they need it. But I don't think they'll eat very much of it. Let's see if they want some range cubes now. There they come. Come on, girls. You can see Black Feather right here. She's still got last winter's coat hanging on. The funny thing is, it's actually fallen off on both sides, but it's connected, so it basically is a saddle on her. So it's just sitting there. It's one piece that's completely loose. The shorter days are making these videos a little bit harder to do. Coming home at night and getting a few things done just with the uh, short amount of daylight is a little bit time constraint, not much light to uh, be had in the evenings. Probably work on doing a lot of the footage on the weekends this time of year. I love this weather though. The weather has been just beautiful. Uh, real cool temperatures during the day, like in the 60s, and then at nighttime we're in the 40s. This is uh, probably one of my favorite times of year and I would say even winter. I love winter, I love the cold weather. Uh, I know a lot of you guys probably don't like that, but man, I love the cold weather. I can always put on another coat or another layer, uh, but summer is always miserable for me. Some of their uh, back lines and everything are getting a little bit more defined. You're starting to see that adult look to them, uh, which is really, really cool to see. Um, they, as calves, they're a little bit harder and it's a little bit of a gamble when you're purchasing these guys as calves because you don't really know uh, what they're gonna look like 100%. And so when they grow to adulthood, uh, you get to see a lot more of what they truly are. So they're year, all yearlings now and we're able to see a lot more of the quality of the animal. And then here next year, uh, we'll be able to see the true quality of the animal and to see how well they breed. Hopefully they breed really well. Walking Coyote right here, our bull, he is growing just like he needs to be. He is putting on a lot of weight and he's starting to get what they call a crow's nest up on top of their head. That kind of afro they have, uh, they call that a crow's nest. And He's kind of developing one. Some of those guys can grow theirs so big that they almost look like uh, those dogs that are like real shaggy and their covers over their eyes. I don't think his is gonna be like that or anything, but he's starting to develop that really cool bull, buffalo, or bison look. Strong wind right here. She's starting to get that uh, real thick girth to her and then uh, Red Prairie right here also. But Strong Wind, I really, really like the way she looks. She is a really good quality animal. I'm really happy with the genetics out of them as long as they breed well. They don't like sudden movements, that is for sure. Coming home from work, seeing these guys out in the field. That's the life. So we've got our temporary corral set up and we've got the hay bale ring in there with a hay bale. So the next thing I need to be working on is a water system for this winter. I need to get something that is going to be uh, freeze proof or freeze resistant. So I'm gonna be working on that next. Um, hopefully within the next week or two. And that way, when it turns cold here, really, really shortly here in November, uh, it will not have any problems with that. That's always a pain, man. When we first got started doing Buffalo, I remember chopping ice uh, all winter long, and that was just 
a pain in the butt. And then we got to a point to where we had some uh, freeze proof water systems and that was just a godsend. We don't have a squeeze chute set up or anything like that for these guys right now. I don't know that I'm gonna work them this fall or not. Uh, they are actually in pretty good health. We already wormed them without working them. So I might um, hold off working them this fall and maybe do it next spring. So we'll see. Sun's coming down. I think it's time to get inside. What are you doing, puppy? Huh? Huh? Good puppy? Some of this temporary fence has come down. I'm gonna work on it. And then this uh, corral area here, I decided that I wanted to change the configuration of it. That way I can drive the tractor in, set one of the hay bales in, and have it closed while the bison are in the field, and then be able to open it back up. That way I don't have any trouble with them getting out. What are you up to, coyote? He decided to come over and check things out. They're all hanging out. They know I'm up to something, so they want to know what that is. Out. Moving these panels around, close this off here, and now they want in. They always want what they can't have. Okay, I think I got it configured how I want to. I pulled this hay ring off so that they could find this hay. They were having a little bit of trouble finding this hay. So I think that's how I want it for now. I had a little bit of an incident with my last herd one of my lead cows almost got out uh, because I was pulling the truck in with the hay and she slipped by the truck and I was able to head her off, but it was a little hairy and I don't want that to happen again with the tractor or anything like that. So basically I'm gonna create a chamber um, to close off. So I think I got it set up how I want to and not have the animals trying to get out. We'll just go through it now and check the fence and make sure we don't have any faults. This uh, temporary fence is always a pain in my butt till we can uh, have time to fence this field off. Right now it's basically barbed wire and then temporary electric. It's always getting caught up in that barbed wire, so that's something we need to address. You think I have feed or something, do you? Huh? I don't. We finally got to where Wolf, uh, our dog, is roaming free now, but he's been running through the fences and getting those electric wires caught up. He's kind of creating some mischief. Good old Wolf, causing havoc again. He's a good dog though. You might say, Noah, you're sure checking fence a lot. Yes, yes I am. When you're running this temporary rope fence along barbed wire, it's no good. It caught, gets caught in that barbed wire, shorts out, deer run through the barbed wire, and then you, what you end up having is this fence gets caught like that on that barbed wire and shorts out. So yes, when you're running temporary fence like this, you are checking it all the time. The best thing to do is build a permanent fence like we have in the front. That way the only thing that's really gonna go wrong is if you broke insulators and the insulators are junk or something like that. This is just temporary. Fence like this, high tensile electric, that's the way to go. They're all grunting at me. They're all coming up to see what's going on. They went and had a drink of water and now they're wanting to check things out again. If you listen real close, Coyote is grunting to the girls over here. You don't hear it very often. They're not like cows where they bellow all the time. Red Prairie's coming over to visit. What are you doing, girl? Sometimes they kind of do this long pause snort. Kind of means 
that's far enough. White feather over there, the last one to come up. She's the one grunting. They do that as communication saying, hey, kind of wait for me type of thing. You don't hear it very often though, like I said. Um, sometimes you'll hear it in times like that in communication, and then you might not hear it for weeks, and then all of a sudden they'll get real vocal again. Let's keep on going and finish walking around this fence and see if we can find any issues. I ended up giving a presentation at a friend of mine's Rotary Club last week. And the topic was, why bison? And I'll tell you what, evenings like this, bison following you around the fence, checking things, nice cool evening, that's why bison to me. It just feels right. It's just a lot of fun to have these animals and be able to take care of them. Here they come running around the corner. Red Prairie is getting pretty big. You can kind of see her right there how tall she's getting. Strong Wind is a little bit wider than Red Prairie I think. I think she's a little bit taller. What do you guys think? This is one of the things you'll see with this high tensile. The top line will get a little loose. The reason for that is, is deer, they like to jump over this stuff and they'll kind of get caught in midair and uh, they'll start stretching it out. So all you have to do is take and tighten this up and you're good to go. I'll tell you what, they're really vocal tonight. They're following me all the way around and grunting like crazy at each other. I'm not sure why that is, why sometimes they're more vocal than others. You gonna come around the fence or not? Come on, follow me around. That's one of the weak insulators on a high stress point. So that shouldn't happen again now that we put those really strong insulators on that one. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of excited for winter. I like the cold temperatures when the snow falls and everything just gets quiet. I really enjoy that. Yeah, the fence isn't really in too bad a shape. There was a couple insulators that were broken that I anticipated they were in those real high stress points and we replaced them with the strong ones i anticipate that that's what's going to happen over the course of the next year or so uh, those insulators are just going to start breaking and they were just junk ones that i ended up buying that were supposed to be a good brand i paid a good good amount of money for them um, but i think it was just the plastic or something that was used so we're just going through and replacing those as they break. The only real issues that we had were the fence that just had all that uh, temporary um, hot wire around the barbed wire. That's just constantly getting caught up and that's just gonna be that way, unfortunately, until we replace this whole pasture in this uh, high tensile like this. It all needs to look like this. I thought that was the summer project, but Turns out it's gonna be the winter project. Thanks for watching guys. My name is Noah Gordon. We are Broken Arrow Bison and we will see you next time.